Good evening, adepts. As members of the Church of the Bright Edge, we dedicate ourselves to the law of the knife and the principles of violence, struggle, betrayal, and pain. Our hours are the Colonel, the Lionsmith, and the Wolf Divided. Common followers of Edge are soldiers, generals, and others who enact violence as a part of their work. Mastery and exaltation of this principle is achieved through the artistry of this violence, with the most common theme being shared amongst the followers of this principle being their elegance and grace of movement. As the lionsmith learned when shattering his sword, Edge subverts Forge, just as all things can be overcome with sufficient force. Just as in the Coravality, patience overcomes strength, just as winter subverts Edge. To lesser extents, Lantern and Heart are also related to Edge, as minor aspects of Edge's primary hours at the centre of the Corrivalry. Of course, going forward, we should remember that no principle can exist without the others, without our reality being fundamentally different. Mastering our dedications allows us to master forms of conflict, and for us to deal with our obstacles through assassination and murder. Edge is the primary aspect of all of our weaponry, especially those with blades such as swords and knives. The relationship between Winter and Edge is simple. Winter's representation of stillness and finality is an inevitable result of the expression of violence and pain. The marriage of these two principles within ritual will allow the return of life to a corpse. With the opening of a way, the Maid in the Mirror, an extremely powerful and extremely dangerous spirit, can be summoned. Forge holds a somewhat more intricate relationship with Edge. The Lionsmith embodies most of these connections. Artifice for the creation of powerful weaponry, Change for the transformation of Scapadons and the birth of other monsters within his service and the inevitable changes caused through revolution and betrayals, and finally destruction, for what else can the result of endless battle be? To further understand the teachings we follow, we should first acknowledge the hours which scar, heal and unmake us. As the law of conflict and strife, at the centre of Edge lies the Coravality, the eternal conflict between the three roots of victory, the Colonel, the Lionsmith, and the Wolf Divided. In turn, they represent cunning, strength, and agony. The Colonel is the seventh hour. As a god from flesh, he ascended by slaying the seven coils, before which he acquired the first of the scars he is truly known for, blinding himself and hardening his skin into armour. Above anything else, he is known for his cunning, his endless patience, and his ferocity. Veterans and hunters venerate the Colonel for the mastery of conflict through experience and the cutthroat nature of war. Those who favour the strategy and tactics of battle will also follow him for his lantern, especially those such as generals. Those who regard patience, experience, and the cold practicality of the ending of life find value in his winter aspect, such as those who practice euthanasia of either animals or people. Another key part of the Colonel's personality is the preservation of the status quo and the betrayal of uprisings, perhaps to reflect his previous experience of betrayals himself. The Colonel and his followers employ scars as both armour and weaponry, for we know that scars hold power. The Colonel is said to be so scarred that no visible flesh remains, and by them he is rendered blind, deaf, and totally impervious to any further wound. His body is weaponized to the point that even his digits are said to be lethal, a practice shared by the Histids, a sect of his servants. His other followers value becoming skilled with weapons and honing their experience, especially favoring activities that may procure scars. Fencing clubs are an example in modern society where affluent followers such as Count Gottlieb Jennings venerate the Colonel. The Lionsmith is the Eighth Hour. Originally a mortal who lived within the Shadowless Empire, or the Persian Empire, who was mentored by the Colonel and used his teachings to act as Persia's Golden General. When his fellow mentee, Alexander the Great, invaded, the Golden General refused to take up arms due to their shared past. This was until King Darius III shared the great secret of betrayal with the Golden General. His reaction to learning this was to perform what is called the Rite of the Rebel Striving, to shatter his sword and become the eternal rival of the Colonel. Ever since this day, the pair have been locked in eternal conflict in what is known as the Coravality. Where the Colonel represents cunning and the status quo, the Lionsmith is an hour of strength, rebellion and endurance. He is followed by rebels, revolutionaries, warriors and healers. He is constantly growing stronger and creates monsters to fulfil his purposes. He is said to greatly respect his enemies who have shown strength, such as Anteos, the son of the earth, and now even today the settlement in Anteum that venerates the Lionsmith in turn venerates Anteos. Whilst a key characteristic of the Colonel and his followers is their relative immunity, the Lionsmith's ilk do not have such protection, but they always heal. 
Lab heights are the youngest of his followers and are known for their unnatural beauty. Scaptodons are older and part of their service is their transformation from human to beast. Both of these statuses can be lost, as both entail heavily restricted diets alongside the monumental tasks required of anyone serving in an hour. The Lionsmith is said to create monstrous children with one of his followers, Echidna, the mother of monsters. It cannot be said whether these children are always a product of mating, as it is likely this would result in the crime of the sky, and it is said that lions can be created as weapons are created. Finally, the youngest of them all, the Wolf Divided, the 16th hour. Despite being born shortly after the solar hours, which are gods from light, the Wolf Divided is a god from blood, as it was the sacrifice of the sun in splendour that birthed him, an event otherwise known as the Intercalate. He is the hidden third part of the Corovality, where conflict loses all meaning and chaos consumes. It is important to note that the chaos attributed to the Wolf Divided is not related to the chaos of change associated with Moth, as that is not one of its aspects. The Wolf Divided is followed by those who seek destruction, or those in conflict without cause, meaning that the majority of the times his influence is felt, it is unintended. A revolution that loses its way, or which does not understand its cause, will inevitably attract the Wolf's attention. As the Wolf unmaketh, unmaketh, and unmaketh, he seeks, above all else, his own undoing. As such, those who end their own lives are perhaps performing the greatest act of worship to the wolf divided. The only name of his that we know of only became so after drowning herself in Port Noon. The Corovality refers to the eternal conflict taking place between the Colonel and the Lionsmith, beginning once the Golden General subverted the Forge of Days to shatter his sword and betray his mentor and continuing to this day. The strife imperishable, to use its alternate name, represents all forms of opposition. A hammer striking an anvil is like to invoke the lionsmith, just as natural disaster will draw the shadow of the wolf. Struggles as mundane as trees bending to the breeze is an example of the Corovality appearing. The existence of the Corovality marks a significant difference in edge to the other laws. Because the ascension to a long, within an aspect, relies on immersing oneself within said aspect, those who ascend within Edge must immerse themselves in conflict and lock themselves into the world's machinations of strife. Because of this, the vast majority of Edge Long may only ascend in pairs known as Dyads. It is likely that the Colonel and Lionsmith, beginning their rivalry, were the first Dyad to have existed. This pattern is followed by almost all other Edge ascensions. The two enemies dedicate themselves to both the hour of their choosing and to the conflict between each other. The hour does not need to be unique between members of the Dyad, as we see in the case of D4, the Reckoner leader who served the Colonel, where he may ascend to Edge Longhood under the Colonel, while his child may also ascend under the Colonel as his eternal enemy. An acceptable understanding of the Corovality can be made with the phrase, two sides of the same coin. The Colonel and Lionsmith pursue the same goals, and their followers may easily be misidentified by those who are not amongst the know. The Colonel is of course known for scars, as are his followers. These serve to inure the bearers to both harm and sensations of pain. Indeed, in this way, the Colonel may be considered somewhat of an antithesis to the Red Grail. Conversely, the Lionsmith and his followers will laugh as wounds are inflicted on them. Their pain is intense and reveled in. However, by invoking the Lionsmith, it will always be the case that the convalescence period is both brief and immaculate. Lab heights are known for their beauty after all. The outlier here is the Wolf Divided, who is likely in a dyad with itself. As the wolf eternally struggles to end its own existence, those who ascend outside of the dyad pattern will usually therefore be dedicated to the wolf. The most significant piece of information for followers of Edge to know is of opposition to worms. Both the Lionsmith and Colonel are heavily relied upon by other hours for their capabilities in destroying the worms of the world. The Colonel alone is entrusted with the defence of the Worm Museum within and without the Mantis, and this task is so important that even the Lionsmith will not challenge him here. Similarly, the Lionsmith has strength enough to crush a worm with his hands, a feat shared by no other hour. As we know, humanity's most singular trait is its ability to wage war on itself. This explains the vast number of organisations which adopt Edge's traditions. Even ignoring the servants specifically dedicated to the hours of the Corovality, such as the Triagulari, we have examples in the Iron Wolf Association of Lithuania, the initiates of the Anteum, and the Reckoners, just to name a few significant examples. The Reckoners do not associate themselves with a specific hour. This is deliberate in order for them to avoid the responsibility of taking part in conflicts between the hours. 
Instead, each member of the Reckoners studies Edge in a holistic fashion, with the purpose of making themselves as deadly as they are able. The best way to describe the Reckoners is a mafia of occult assassins who engage in the trade of stolen years, which refers to a kind of currency which is proffered in some way from the cindered tally, usually looked after by the Madrigard. A stolen year is extremely valuable, as it allows the owner to consume it to heal and shrug off injuries that may otherwise be debilitating, or even just to extend their own lifespan. Because of this, Reckoners are generally not interested in ascendancy, as achieving a high rank in a Reckoner mob more or less secures a form of immortality and its own form of immense occult power. Though, their independence from ours do mean that a Reckoner will never achieve the power available to Long or other true immortals, such as Alakites. A low-ranking Reckoner more or less acts as a hired gun or an informant. These Reckoners are unlikely to have any knowledge of Edge, as stolen years are far too valuable to waste on underlings. It seems to be the case that greater access to stolen years only becomes available to underbosses and above, which is implied to be the rank achieved by the Exile before they rebelled against their father. The only publicly known Reckoner Lord is known as Dufour. We do not know if he represents the pinnacle of all Reckoners, or is simply the leader of one mob of many. He eschews Reckoner tradition by accepting the protection of the Colonel, which is known by the Exile when employing the use of cats, a creation of the Lionsmith, to deter him. Reckoners seem to be viewed with some derision by the wider occult community. We see this the most when the Librarian of Hush House handles the affair of the Forgivable Debt. None of the visitors have a positive view of these mobsters, regarding them mostly as annoyances or as fools. Indeed, the affair of the Forgivable Debt is centred entirely around a war between two Reckoner mobs which seems to have been kicked off by an underboss attempting a conjuring with the overall goal being to cheat the Madrigad out of more stolen years. This attempt failed miserably, which is supposedly as expected. This concludes the Primer on the Edge Principle. Thank you for attending. For more lore, feel free to join the library. Otherwise, please go forth and spread the word of strife, for conflict can never rest.